Hello everyone, this is Nicole Steele, the owner of the Joyful Stamper, and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator who really loves to make cards and paper craft. So today, I hope this isn't too early, but I made a Christmas card. Yes, I know it's July, I don't want to rush it, but I had to do it. I just felt in the mood. So every Saturday, I post a sketch on my blog, thejoyfulstamper.com, and I also make a video uh, for the card that I made using that sketch, and I also write up a tutorial. So if you head over to my blog, you can get the sketch and you can get the written tutorial to print out to follow along if you like, or you can just watch this video because I'm happy with that too. But in any case, I'm so glad you're here stamping with me today. So let's get started with this card. I just love it. Oh, okay, let's go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm starting with a piece of Ornate Garden Designer Series paper. Now here's the thing. This paper didn't start off this way. It started off like this, okay? So you can see it's white and the flowers have gold foil on them, so they're shiny. But I thought, I can turn this into a Christmas card if I use my Stampin' Blends to color it. So that's what I did. Now, so you don't have to sit here and watch me color the entire thing. I went ahead and did a lot of it ahead of time. But I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna finish coloring this little portion down here. So I'm gonna use a dark shaded spruce Stampin' Blends marker, a dark cherry cobbler Stampin' Blends marker, and I'm having my keeping my color lifter nearby because I'm going to use it if I happen to color outside of the lines, which I will, I will. I'm not a perfect color, so it is going to happen. Now, I find the easiest way to color is with the bullet tip. There is a brush tip on this end, but I, I get more control with the bullet tip. And I like to start by following the outline of the image. And then I color in circles to fill it in. And as you can see, I am going over these gold foil lines. And that's okay. And the reason it's okay is because I have my color lifter nearby. And I have discovered that you can use the color lifter to remove the color that gets on those gold foil lines. So go ahead, color your entire piece of designer series paper or pattern paper with abandon. No worries. And you can do the whole sheet at one time. Then what you're gonna do is take the color lifter, and again, I'm using the bullet, um, the bullet point, and I'm going over the gold foil. Now, I'm not worrying about the little flower lines in the center. I'm talking about the major flower outlines there. And I'm just gonna go over it with my bullet point, and it will rub away, essentially erasing any of the Stampin' Blends color that was on that gold foil there, so. Really new, really new tip, really um, new tip. Handy tip, handy tip. Now I'm gonna go back in with just, or with shaded spruce, and I'm going to color my leaves. Now for some reason, I have an easier time coloring these leaves than I did the flowers. So this is, was a pretty quick work for me. Do you guys have Stampin' Blends or do you have other alcohol ink markers? Cause I know there's several different brands out there, Copics being, one of them and the, I guess the innovators of this, I don't know, but I'm not a coloring expert. So I find that the less expensive investment for the Stampin' Blends fit my stamping style very nicely. Oop. So, okay. So I finished that and there's one little spot down there. I want to go ahead and fix. I see. I missed it. Okay. So yeah, use your Stampin' Blends and color this entire piece of designer series paper. And again, this is from the Ornate Garden. And don't be alarmed, the back's gonna look really ugly, but you know what, nobody's gonna see that. So we're focused on this. So, and we're gonna set this aside for now because we don't need this just yet. Now, I'm taking a four and a quarter by 11 inch piece of Just Jade cardstock. And I'm gonna score it down the middle at five and a half inches. Now you can just fold your cardstock in half. You don't need a bone folder. You don't need to score it. But the reason I do go ahead and score it is because it breaks the paper fibers in the cardstock so that when I fold it, I don't get those little crack marks in my paper. It just gives a nice, clean, crisp finish. So it's entirely optional, not necessary at all. 
Now I have a piece of Mary Merlot cardstock, five and a quarter inches by four inches. And again, the tutorial that I have written up on my blog, thejoyfulstamper.com, has all these measurements. So you don't need to worry about writing them down. Don't you love these two colors together? Just Jade and Mary Malo. I think they're perfect for Christmas, yes. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to glue this piece to the Mary Merlot. And I'm just gonna use multi-purpose liquid glue for that. This is a good, inexpensive, all-purpose glue, and you don't need much of it. You can see I did not cover the back of that entirely. And that's gonna go on our card front, but we're not gonna do that just yet. Not just yet. We've got some more to add to this. Now, I have this piece that I die cut using the Ornate Layers dies, and I die cut it using Just Jade cardstock. I'm going to adhere it to my card front with some Stampin' Dimensionals. And I'm just going to put three on the back. You can put however many you want. I know some people, they cover, completely cover the back of their piece. Um, and I guess if you're going to mail it, it would keep it from getting smushed in the mail. And I'm going to put this right towards the left of my card, just like that. Now the next thing I'm going to do is get a piece of Whisper White cardstock. And I'm going to stamp the plaid tree from this Perfectly Plaid Christmas set. This also has a matching punch to punch out these trees down here. And I've actually even used it to punch this one out. Although this isn't designed to work with this punch, but I do it anyways and it looks quite nice. So we are gonna use shaded spruce ink and we're gonna punch out two Christmas trees. Whoops. Oh, here's a tip for you. If you find that your clear stamps are not sticking so well to the block anymore, just take them up to your kitchen sink and you can wash them with some dish soap and hot water and they'll be as good as new. Okay, that's the first one. And then we want the second one. I just love that plaid pattern. So classic. Okay, now I'm gonna use my punch to punch each of these trees out. And this truly is scratch paper. <laughs> As you can see, I have some daisies on the back. I save every last little bit of white cardstock. Do you guys do that too? <laughs> I can't bear to part with it. No matter how tiny the piece I think of, surely I'm gonna use this. Surely I'm going to use this. Okay, I'm gonna take my cherry cobbler ink pad and I'm going to stamp the Merry Christmas sentiment on this little piece of Just Jade cardstock. And I'm gonna do it like this. Now, you could use Mary Merlot to match the cardstock mat, but guess what? I don't have Mary Merlot ink. But I did color these flowers with Cherry Cobbler, which were a really close match, so that's why I'm gonna go ahead and use this. And I'm gonna go ahead and put some Stampin' Dimensionals on the back, so then when it's time for me to stick it to the card, I've already got it on there. Okay, we've got those, and I think we're ready to start assembling our Christmas card. Now, we have this we're gonna wrap some ribbon around it. So I'm using some Just Jade ribbon. This is a new Stampin' Up! in color for 2020 to 2022, so it'll be around for a couple years. And I'm going to tie this in a bow. Now, you can cut a length if you want, but I personally, I gotta get the right direction here. I personally, um, I tie it straight from the spool. And the reason I do that is because I find I never accurately gauge how much ribbon I need to when I'm tying my bows, and so I end up wasting a lot of it. And that's why I just um, tie it straight from, from the spool. Now, if I'm having classes, I measure out the ribbon and I cut it generously so that people have lots and lots to work with because some people like to tie bigger bows than others. Now, I'm going rather large with my bow here, but that's okay. More is more. How many times have I said that? If you've watched my videos, you've heard me say that many times. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and glue this to my card base, and I'm going to use multi-purpose liquid glue. Have you guys started your Christmas cards yet? If you have, let me know in the comments. Christmas in July is a very real thing. It's very popular. Um, I've actually never been one to stamp Christmas stuff much before October, even November, but I don't know. I just, I saw this week's sketch and 
the first thing that popped in my head were those pine trees. So I had to do it. Okay, now, oh, these. Yes, let's talk about these. Square vellum doilies. I love these. You can color on them with your Stampin' Blends. You can cut them down to different shapes and sizes. See that circle there? You could trim away these corners and be left with a circle doily. But we're going to stick it down just as it is. And let me move my ribbon over so I can have some space for that. Okay, and I'm going to use some glue dots to adhere this. So let me see. I'm going to put some glue dots... Um, going to put one right there. And I actually don't need too many because I'm going to be layering some things on top of this. So I um, don't really need too many. And I'm, actually, I think I might just leave it like that. I don't think I'm going to add any more. If I need more later, I will. What I'm going to do is tuck my pine trees behind it like this. Originally, I did not have them on here. But it just, it looked too naked up there. Way, way, way too naked. And I thought, mm, I like tucking and layering, so I thought those pine trees would be a pretty good uh, choice. I peeled off the liner to these dimensionals, and I'm going to stick this right there, just like this. Okay, these are going to get glued on with liquid glue. However, I want a little bit of texture and interest to these, so I'm only going to put liquid glue on the bottom half of these trees and I'm going to tuck them behind that square vellum doily just like this. Mm. I am loving this. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Okay and the last thing we have for this card, this is a super easy Christmas card don't you think? We're gonna use some gilded gold gems. I love these. They have they're faceted, um, and they're not that bright, bright gold. They're they're gilded, so they look a little bit antique -y. And we're going to put some at the tip of each of those pine trees. So, oh my gosh, do you love this Christmas card? Are you going to make one? Are you going to start your Christmas cards, or at least just make one? <laughs> Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for joining me for this Saturday sketch card. Make sure you head over to my blog, thejoyfulstamper.com, to get the written tutorial for this and to also see the sketch that this card's based on. Also, too, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that every Saturday you won't miss um, the next video for these Saturday sketches. So, all right, guys, happy stamping!